Okay, so today we will uh, solve some problems uh, in regard to the common source, common gate, and common drain amplifier that we have already studied in the last few classes. Now, today's first problem is something like that. We have a common source amplifier like this. For biasing, this 1.2 volt battery is used. This is the input signal V in. We have VDD that is equal to <coughs> 2 volt. And this resistance is 3 kilo ohms. And the output is obtained from the drain terminal as usual with some specifications the specifications are like that mu and c aux is equal to 100 microns per volt square w by l equal to 10 vth equal to 0 0.5 volt and let's assume that there is no channel length modulation, that means lambda equal to 0. Now for this particular circuit, you have to find out the value of the small signal voltage gain. That is the first part. What is the small signal voltage gain for this particular circuit? And uh, Rd, that is 3 kilo ohms, this is Rd. Now if the value of this resistance, Rd is doubled, then what happens to the circuit? So this is the, so there are two parts. So first of all, as you can understand, it's nothing but a common source amplifier, very simple common source amplifier. And the conditions are given, mu and cox equal to 100 microampere per volt square, W by equal to 10, VTH equal to lambda equal to 0. So when lambda equal to 0, it makes your calculation a little bit easier. Now first of all, you have to go for the DC analysis, right? Now here what we find, during the DC analysis, this V in is absent. So under this condition, uh, your uh, this uh, gate voltage Vg is equal to 1.2 volt. Source is connected to ground, hard ground, that is 0. So, what is your Vgs? Vgs equal to 1.2 volt. Okay. So, Vgs minus Vth, that is equal to 1.2 volt minus. 0 0.5 volt that is equal to 0 0.7 volt so which is greater than 0 that means the device is on okay device is on and let's assume that the device operates in the saturation let's assume that is our assumption that okay let's assume that the device is is on in the saturation region now, under this condition you can find out the expression for the current this i dc current so that value equal to half mu and c aux w over l into vgs minus Vth whole square. So if you just plug in these values, so you have half there. Mu and Cox is 100 microampere per volt square multiplied with W that is 10. And there you have uh, Vgs minus Vth whole square that is 0 0.7. Whole square. This much of microampere this much a microampere and that is equal to 0.7 into 0.7 that is 0.49 divided by 2 that is equal to 0.245 multiplied with 1000 that is equal to 245 microampere or you can write 0 0.245 Okay, so that is your uh, <coughs> drain current ID is equal to 0.245 milliampere. Now this current, so whenever uh, this current is flowing through RD with RD by equal to 3 kilo ohms, so what is your uh, VD then? The drain potential, what is that? This is nothing but 2 volt 
minus this IDRT drop. So IDRT means uh, here you have 0 0.245 multiplied with 3, this much of volt. So 0 0.245 into 3, 0.735, so 2 minus 0.735 will give you 1.265 volt. So 1.265 volt. So that's in milli and that was in kilo. Milli into kilo that is equal to volt. So 1.265 volt, so drain to source volt is 1.265 volt. Get to source minus threshold that is overdrive is 0.7 volt. So uh, the drain to source voltage that is also equal to VTS since uh, source is connected to ground. So therefore our assumption was correct because we find that VTS is greater than the overdrive voltage, VGS minus the threshold voltage. So our assumption was correct. So the device is operating in the saturation region, right? Then uh, I am not going into the calculation for this uh, voltage. Can you know the calculation? Uh, that is equal to, I mean, uh, the expression is GM times RT. So you need to find out the value of this GM. So what is that? Uh, you can take uh, that particular expression. So let's take GM equal to twice ID. The overdrive voltage, VGS minus VTH. So here you have uh, twice ID, ID is equal to 2.245 milliampere. So 2 into 0.245, that is equal to 0.49 milliampere divided by VGS minus VTH is uh, 0 0.7. Right? So 0.7. 0 0.7 millisiemens. That is the expression for GM. Right? 0 0.7 millisiemens, then what about your voltage gain? AV? GMRD. So the voltage gain AV is equal to 0 0.7 multiplied with RT3, that is equal to 2.1. So that is your voltage gain, 2.1. Not that much, only two. So that's uh, if your input signal is having some radiation from say plus delta V to minus delta V, then it will be plus two delta V to minus two delta V. So it's not that much. Anyway, so 2.1 is your voltage gain. Now the second part of the question says that what happens to the circuit if RT is doubled? Now if the if the value of RT is doubled, then then you have to so this expression is remaining the same. VGS minus VTH 0.7 volt. You have to calculate the the drain current is equal to 0 0.245 milliampere. Then under this condition, when RT is equal to double, now if RT is equal to double, then yes, in that case, uh, if RT is equal to 6 kilo ohms, then your VD is how much? It is 2 minus, here you have 0.245 multiplied with 6. So if we just calculate this one, 0.245 multiplied with 6, that is equal to 1.47. So 1.47, that means this is 0 0.53 volt. 0 0.53 volt. So which is less than the gate source minus the threshold voltage. That means the device operates in the, now the device enters into the time region. So you are not, uh, you are not supposed to uh, operate the device. RT is equal to uh, uh, 6 kilo ohms, at least with that particular uh, bias voltage. Okay. So, you have to identify that particular uh, the threshold point, which indicates that okay, now the device is now entering into the. Yeah, so now the device is entering into the triode. The pre -street. Okay, so the next question, the next problem is not a numerical one, but still uh, you have to find out the voltage gain for that particular thing. So, you need to find out the expression for the voltage gain for this circuit. First of all, you need to identify what kind of circuit it is. 
and already we have discussed the individual components so this is apply vdd this is mos2 this one is mos1 here we have a resistance rs and we apply the input over here and the output is obtained from this terminal so you need to find out the expression for the voltage gain of this particular circuit neglecting channel length modulation that is there is no channel length modulation let's assume that lambda is equal to 0 then you need to find out what is the voltage gain for this circuit yes so first of all you have to identify what kind of circuit it is it's a common source first of all it's a common source amplifier this MOS M1 is acting as amplifying MOS and MOS M2 will act as the load. What kind of load? The actuated load, right? And uh, it's not a simple common source amplifier, it's a common source amplifier with source regeneration, right? So, what about this MOS, this M2, if I consider, so this combination, so now I can uh, simplify. One second, I can write down the expression or write down the let me draw the given circuit for that. So you have this M2. Remember, this M2 is realized by using an NMOS, right? Gate and drain, they are sorted together. So direct connected load. This is the source terminal. And the source terminal is connected to some output node, that is V out. And typically, for this, device, this type of device in NMOS, the, uh, the bulk or body is connected to ground, right? So therefore, you should consider, also it is mentioned that lambda is equal to zero, but nothing is mentioned about the gamma. So since nothing is mentioned about the gamma, so you have to assume that gamma is non-zero, okay? So this direct connected device can be represented by means of a simple register, right? Yes, you have a simple register, and then now I can redraw the circuit like this so the input is applied over here here you have the supply vdd we're taking the output from this terminal this is the source resistance rs this is your v out and what about that resistance if i call it rd what is that hmm, that means one by gm 1 by gm parallel 1 by gm right or you can say that 1 by gm2 plus gmb2 right 1 by gm2 plus gmb2 you don't have any lambda because it is mentioned the lambda is equal to 0 so in that case you can just forget about that otherwise you have to consider that uh, this uh, lambda is there i mean this uh, r naught is there in parallel with this rd okay so now it is very easy i'm not going into the details of this calculation you know that what is the expression for the voltage gain? In fact, the mod of this, if I consider because AB is negative, because it's a common source amplifier, AB is negative. So what is the formula? The mod is given by, the mod of AB is given by the resistance. So you don't have an R0 there. You don't have an R0 neither for M1 nor for M2. Right? So AB, mod of AB is nothing but the resistance seen between the drain and the AC ground. What is that? This resistance, 1 upon gm2 plus gmb2 divided by 1 by transconductance. Hmm? Which one? Yeah, for m1 you have to consider the body effect. For m1 you have to consider the body effect. Right? So the transconductance seen between, I mean the 1 upon gm that part. So once again, if you would like to, uh, let me just, had this been over, then let me just uh, once again consider the small signal model for this kind of thing. So here you have m1. This is the gate terminal, this is the drain terminal, 
this is the source there you have a resistance that is rs we can get to source suppose this voltage is v1 and between drain to source you have gm1 v1 you don't have r not over there no r not okay and then uh, the input is applied between the gate and the ac ground that is v in and between d1 and s1 you should have a gmb1 times vbs1 so there you have gmb1 times vbs1 now what is your vbs1 there so vbs1 is equal to your vb1 minus vs1 that is equal to minus vs1 right minus vs1 and you are taking the output from this terminal so this is your output terminal v out so it is gmb1 times minus of vs1 right so this is the voltage over there vs1 this voltage is vs1 and here i can write gmb1 times minus of vs1 okay then what is the relation between v in and vs v in and vs how are they related v1 equal to vs1 minus v vs1 equal to minus v1 minus v1 why so why so minus v1 if i apply kvl in this loop if i apply kvl in this loop then v in plus minus that is equal to v1 plus vs isn't it v in is equal to v1 plus vs if i apply kvl in this loop v in is equal to v1 plus vs okay so i can represent uh, uh, v1 as v in minus vs and what about the total current which is flowing through rs gm1 v1 minus i can consider gm v1 vs1 right it's basically uh, vs1 or vs whatever minus vs let it be uh, let it be vs only otherwise it can it may create some confusion let it be vs okay gmb1 vs minus vs okay so this two kind i can consider gm1 v1 minus of gmb1 vs this two kind are entering this rs this is the direction this is so both of them are entering gm1 v1 and gmb1 minus of here that means gm1 v1 minus gmb1 vs so both of them are entering through the resistance rs and that total current is gm1 v1 minus gmb1 vs this gets multiplied with rs that is equal to your vs so from here you have to just eliminate v1 and you have to substitute that expression over there and finally you can you can identify what is your expression for the the voltage gain v out of one v which one yeah it is there so accordingly you have to find out that particular resistance so that resistance also there this resistance r is connected between this resistance r d which is nothing but the diode connected resistance given by 1 upon gm2 plus gm2 since lambda is equal to 0 right so that that is flowing through this r d so what is your v out minus of that current multiplied with rd minus of that current minus of this gm gm1 v1 
minus gmv on gs when it is flowing through rd then ultimately v out is equal to minus of rd into that particular that entire current summation of these two current and you know the uh, family expression for that for a, a common source amplifier with source degeneration you know the expression minus the resistance seen between the drain and AC ground in the numerator and the denominator you have 1 upon gm if i just neglect the channel uh, if i just neglect the body effect 1 upon gm if i don't neglect the body effect then it should be 1 upon gm plus gm plus the resistance seen between the source and the ac ground and there you have only a simple resistor rs so accordingly you can uh, get that particular Now let me move to the art problem. I think it is uh, what is already discussed, but still, uh, for the completeness, I am one second referring this one. Hopefully, you can remember during our. Uh, Lecture, we have already discussed that part. Find out the resistance looking between the terminal A and B in this particular circuit. What is that circuit called? Huh? What is that circuit called? Already we have discussed this one. I am not going to the details of this circuit. And uh, these two voltage might be defined. Let it be say, let it be V1 here and V2 here. Doesn't matter. At least uh, these voltages are provided so that these uh, devices are on. So uh, find out the resistance looking between the terminal A and B in this particular circuit. So first of all, to identify what kind of circuit it is. S code. S code. Why S code? Is it an amplifier? Is it an amplifier? <laughs> Uh, this device is provided beyond a switch. Is it an amplifier? No. Huh? Uh, there is no AC input. DC bias is there, no? Is it an amplifier? No. Current source. Current source, right? But not a normal current source. It's not a normal idea. What if it is there for M1? For M1, the body effect is there, for M2, the body effect is not there. Right, but typically it's, it's not a normal current source, it's a degenerated current source. We have already discussed this one. Right, it's a degenerated current source. Typically, what happens for a typical current source, what is the resistance value? This RO, so suppose I am having a MOS, something like that. One MOS in isolation, something like this. Suppose these are the two terminals X and Y. Some voltage V naught you have provided or any arbitrary MOS M naught. What is equivalent resistance? Between looking from between these two terminals X and Y, what is equivalent resistance? Huh? One by GM. Do you expect one by GM there? Huh? One by the Only? Yeah. In finance. It's not an ideal current, it's a practical current. So that's why uh, you have some uh, finite amount, right? So I'm not going to the details of that, that whether it is R0 or 1 open GM or that, you know, this is basically R0. Right? Shall I go into the details of that? How this R0 is coming? No. R0, simple R0, 
right? And then what happens? Now if I add some resistance over there, if I add one resistance over there, it's no longer R0. The degeneration. Then what is the expression for that? If some R RS is connected over there. Uh, then it becomes, then the equivalent resistance is 1 plus GMRO times RS plus RO. 1 plus GMRO times RS plus RO. Okay? Now this time you have the upper MOS which is degenerated by the lower MOS. Upper MOS is degenerated by the lower MOS. Then the resistance looking between the two terminal A and B. So I am not going into the details because you know the individual. Well, if I have a simple current source kind of thing, then what is the resistance R0? Now, if this R0 is degenerated by some another resistance RS, I mean, this, if this MOS is degenerated by some another resistance RS, then what is the equivalent resistance? 1, upon, 1 plus GMR times RS plus R0. So, now, considering these two different phenomena into your account, then this RAB is 1 plus. Now, you can consider the body effect for the upper MOS. GM1 plus GMB1. Multiplied with R2 plus R1. Okay. Now let's move to the fourth circuit. Calculate the voltage gain. Calculate the voltage gain for this given circuit. One second, I don't require any numerical calculation for this one. So there you have two stages of amplification. M1 there, M2 there. R is there. And this voltage can be anything. Let it be notch. Let's assume that M1 is properly biased. You have some biased voltage over there. Then uh, you need to find out the voltage gain for this particular circuit. What is that circuit? Is it an amplifier? Yes or no? No. And we can put one to the left hand. Really good one. Okay, we have not considered any uh, intermediate voltage. We have not considered, suppose I would like to take it at this particular terminal. Is it an amplifier? Yes or no? From here to here, M1, does it act like an amplifier? M1? I think that, okay, some bias is there for M1. M1 is on in saturation. So, we need AC plus DC plus DC. Obviously, AC plus DC, otherwise uh, it will not operate. Right. So the first one is this one is common source amplifier with source degeneration. Right? Second stage is simple common gate. Right? So if I consider okay, over here, suppose this is Vx, then what is the V what is the expression for or what is your Vx upon V in? What is Vx upon V in? 
minus you know the total resistance seen between the drain and the AC ground divided by the uh, one upon GM plus the total resistance seen between the source and AC ground. Right. Then what is the total resistance seen between the drain? Of MOS1 and this ground. Yes, so now you have the two different, two different resistance. One is through this path, one is this resistance to AC ground through this path because this VDT is equivalent to AC ground. This is nothing but AC ground. And through this path. What is that resistance? 1 upon GM2. GM2 plus GM1. Okay, you can consider that GM1 for the time being. Sir, nothing is specified. Nothing is specified. So let it be RD1 parallel 1 upon GM2. Okay? In the, denom in, in the denominator, what do you have? 1 upon GM1 plus RS. Typically, this value is almost close to unity because the numerator is close to what? 1 upon GM2 because R is typically large. Right. That is Vx upon V. And then what is your V out upon Vx? V out upon Vx? Common gate amplifier? What do you expect for common gate amplifier? The V out upon Vx? GM2 times RD2. GM2 times RD2. Right? And then the product of these two, Vx upon V and V out upon Vx, is your final gain, AV overall. Overall. It's nothing but. Vx upon V in multiplied with V out upon Vx, which is equal to minus Rd1. So, for simplicity, here you have uh, neglected both of these two effects, second order effects. multiplied with gm to rd2. So, here you have considered lambda is equal to 0, gamma is equal to 0. So, just neglect lambda is equal to 0, gamma is equal to 0. Otherwise, you have to consider those values into your account. Okay, now let us move to the today's last problem. For a common gate amplifier with these specifications, so I am just mentioning the specifications, so no circuit is given. So the specifications are something like that, VDT is equal to 1.5 volt, power budget, the maximum power 1.5 milliwatt, mu and C ox is equal to 100 microamps per volt square, VTH is equal to 0 0.5 volt, W by L equal to 50, lambda is equal to 0. So for a common gate amplifier with these specifications, calculate the maximum value Calculate the maximum value of the source resistance. For common gate, as you understand, that there should be some source resistance connected. Maximum power to huh. So you know that for a common gate amplifier, typically you should have some bias voltage there, some bias voltage V naught. We have another supply over there, some RD over there, some RS over there, and you are applying the input. Suppose input is also having some resistance, 
it will be r in this is a typical common gate amplifier typical common gate amplifier right the input uh, the source signal i mean the input signal is also having some internal resistance r in typical r in is small you can consider that is zero or anyway uh, and then uh, rd is the output resistance uh, and v out is obtained from the train terminal and obviously since it's a common gate so gate is having some bias p not so the question uh, you need to find out the maximum value of the source resistance maximum why maximum why is it important or maximum current not exactly okay uh, if the is 1.5 volt and power rating is maximum 1.5 milli uh, milliwatt uh, then you can understand what can be a maximum current yeah. 1 milliampere yeah. what is the maximum current id max is equal to 1 milliampere right 1 milliampere maximum current Okay, then under this condition, what should be your work drive voltage? ID is given, movement C of W by L, everything is given. Saturation huh? You have to ensure that it is in saturation. Right. So, V dot is not given. V dot is not given. ID, you know that the maximum for ID is equal to 1 milliampere. Okay. If it is given, then uh, from that you can find out the expression for device in saturation. Then, uh, what is the expression for this ID? So, ID, you know, ID is equal to half mu n C ox W over L VGS minus VTH whole square, right? So, there you have half. Mu and C ox is 100 there, W by L is 50 milliampere multiplied with VGS minus VTH whole square. This is 1 milliampere, so I should write 10 to the power minus 3 there, and there you have 10 to the power minus 6, right? Okay. Then what is your VGS minus VTH whole square from here? VGS minus VTH whole square. What is VTS minus VTS whole square? Yes, so uh, 10 to the power here you have uh, 10 to the power minus 4, 10 to the power minus 4, there you have 10 to the minus 3. So, 20 by 50, 20 by 50, that is 2 by 5, right, 2 by 5, okay, 0.4, just check it, 0 0.4, 0.4, right. Then what is the water wave voltage? VGS minus VTH, square root of that. Scientific calculator. Square root of. Hmm? 10 to the power 2, 10 to the power minus 6. That means 10 to the power minus 4. 10 to the minus 4 there. 10 to the minus 3. So 10. 10 women. 10. 2 by 5, 2 by 5 only. Square root of 0.4, what is that? Square root of 0.4? 
0.63 okay so 0.63 volt so your vgs is how much 0.63 plus 0.5 0.63 plus 0.5 RD is not given It is 1.13 VGS is 1.13 Right Can you find out the value of GM? Yes you can find out the value of GM out of that. What is that? 2i d by this voltage, overdrive, or uh, square root of twice i d mu and c of w whatever. So, what is that? The GM expression. So, let me let me go to the next slide. What is the GM expression? GM is equal to twice i d by the overdrive voltage. VGS minus VTH. Two milliampere, two into one, and what was the overdrive voltage there? Zero point six three, no? Zero point six three volt. So zero point six three. This much of millisiemens. Two by point six three. Three point one seven. Three point one seven millisecond. Right? What is one of the GM then? One one by yeah, so. Well, I am interested in finding out 1 upon gm. 2.63 by 1000 divided 3.17. What is 1 upon gm? 1 by gm? 0.25 kilo ohm. Why kilo? One of them is not that large. Millisiemens are just twice idea. What was ID? ID was one milliampere. Two milliampere divided by zero point three. Three point one seven millisiemens here. GM. Point one seven ten to the power minus three. Teacher, what is it? Three hundred. One three one five kilo ohms. Three hundred fifteen. Let me see three hundred fifteen. Three hundred fifteen ohms, right? Now the thing is that. Why I am interested in finding out this 1 upon gm? Why 1 upon gm? Because it's a common gate amplifier. It's a common gate amplifier, the input resistance common gate is 1 upon gm. Right. Now, here, if you just once again take a look at this. So, there you have, so whenever the input signal is present over there, so here you have two different resistance. One is through this path, that resistance, which is and second one is the resistance, the input resistance provided by the, the common weight itself. Typically, what do you expect? You should expect that this RS should be much, much larger. RS should be much, much larger so that majority of the input signal, I mean the majority of the uh, signal should go through this uh, MOS. So, so one upon GM should be much, much less with respect to RS, or in other words, RS should be much, much higher as compared to 1 upon GM. 
Typically, what do you expect? We expect that this R is, let it be say, 10 times higher. Suppose R is, typically we expect that R is. R is the parallel action, Yes. What do you expect? We expect that this resistance should be much, much small. This RS, I mean, 1 upon 0 should be much, much small as compared to RS. So that the, if I consider the coupling loss over there, that loss is minimum. So we are in the, we are in the process of finding out what should be my, what should be the value of this V0. Okay. In the process of calculating RS, in the process of identifying RS, now, let's try to identify what is my limitation. Where is the limitation of this? 1 upon GM and RS. You, you have two resistance, 1 upon GM and RS. Typically, what do you expect? That this 1 upon GM should be much, much small as compared to RS. Right. Let's, let's take some typical value for RD. Let, let it be, say, say, 1 kilos, for example. Let's take some typical value for uh, this RD. RS is much, much larger than 1 upon GM. Let's consider that this is 10 times higher. 10 times high. Suppose RS is equal to say uh, 10 times of this 1 upon GM. RS is equal to 10 times of this 1 upon GM. Then what is the problem? What problem can we face over there? If RS is uh, that much large. What is the object? Your object is to make RS as large as possible. As large as possible. But remember, I have to ensure that the device must remain in the saturation. Device must remain in the saturation. Yes, so what I can do, I can at max, I can at max increase the, uh, you will get voltage over there. We have not calculated V0 yet. We know VGS. We know VGS. VGS we have already calculated. VGS we have already calculated, VGS. There is 1.13 volt. So what is your VGS? VGS is nothing but VG minus VS? VGS is VG minus VS? So what is VS? VS is ISRS or IDRS. Right. IDRS. So in order to increase this, in order to increase this I RS, VGS we know, that is equal to VG minus VS, right? I have to maximize this VS because for higher, because what is the ultimate objective? I have to increase this RS for a faithful amplification. I have to increase this RS, right? So if I increase RS, then VS should also increase, right? And at the same time, in order to ensure a sufficient large value for this VGS, what is the what is the way out? The way out is that you have to also increase this VG. Get voltage. Right. So at max, what I can expect? At max, this get voltage that we have considered over there, suppose some V naught. So let's connect, let's V naught is as high as your supply voltage. That's the maximum what I can get. It, it, it is in between VD and, VD and 0. So I have to enhance this particular VG value because VS is increased. VS is increased, right? Since VS is increased for, for a larger value of, so why we require a very large value of RS. So you have to large RS is important. Because if you have large RS, then you should have very large voltage drop at the source terminal. And get to source that difference I have to maintain. Why? Because that value ultimately determines drain current. If you have higher overdrive voltage, then you can you can extract the maximum current. Already it is mentioned that the maximum current is given by one milliampere. 
1.5 volt is a supply, 1.5 milliwatt is your power budget, so maximum current is 1 milliampere. We would like to exploit the maximum going to the circuit. Everything is constant, mu and cox is constant, uh, your uh, WL is constant. So you know to ensure the high the, the highest possible value for your ID, this overdrive should be maximum. At the same time, it is mentioned that or it is required that your RA should be large. Your question says that you have to find the maximum source. That means you have high VS value. At the same time, you have to increase VGS. Right? So, what is the value? You have to increase VG. So, what is the maximum possible value of VG? That is the supply. So, VG equal to 1.5. So, let it be 1.5 volt. Now, if VG equal to 1.5 volt, then you can identify what. So, you know that VG is equal to 1.13 volt. Right? So, what is the source voltage then under this condition? If, if I assume that in my VG is equal to this VG is equal to 1.5 volt, and already you have got that VGS is equal to 1.13, right? So, what is your source voltage then? 0.37 volt, right? That is equal to how much? That is equal to ID times RS. R A times R S value of I. That time R is not there the, for bias calculation. Hmm? Yeah, bias, bias calculation. Bias calculation. That means I have not applied input yet. DC operation. DC operation. One milliampere is the current. What is the voltage? Three seventy volt. Three seventy. Adding thousand sir. Adding the adding the ground pressure. Adding the adding. <laughs> 370 ohms. Now they are comparable. Now they are comparable. One upon G and R is they are comparable. So that could have been the high, maximum possible value for R is. Right. 315 ohms, 370 they are comparable. So you have a coupling loss close to 50%. Right. Three seventy ohms there. Then the second part of the question says that what happens if the W value is doubled? What happens if W value is doubled? ID No, we cannot increase ID. There is maximum limit one milliampere. W is minus VG. Second part is that what happens if ID is, I mean, if uh, WL is double? Yes. And if RS increases, then what, what is your what is advantage? And remember, when you are in the second case, what you find? Second case. Your overdrive reduces, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because I is equal to what? I is equal to half mu and C of W order into order square. Second time, what happens? You have same ID, same 1 million per current, but your W value is, is increased from 50 to 100. That means overdrive voltage reduces. For same ID, hopefully, you can remember the expression for GM. The expression says that GM is equal to twice ID upon. VOD, isn't it? Now your ID is fixed, 1 milliampere. Now when W is increased, the VOD reduces. So in the second case, higher GM, when W is large, what is the expression for the voltage gain for a common gate? GMRT. If I forget about the coupling loss, it's basically GMRT. Now, for the same RD, now you have higher GM there. Higher GM, so higher gain. Can I get the point? And there you find that uh, it is uh, uh, at least uh, somewhat larger than 370 ohms. At least 2 to, two to 3 times larger as compared to this one upon GM. So, coupling loss is also less. GMRT is also large, coupling loss is also less. So, now this time you have a better amplitude. And W L is increased from 50 to 100.